In this video, we are going to solve the MGNF past year question paper that is from 2020. Two sections will be covered in this video, verbal ability, reading comprehension and general awareness. We will do DILR and QA in the next video. There were 30 questions each from DILR, QA and VARC and 10 questions were from general awareness. So a total of 120 minutes to solve 100 questions. The questions looked relatively easy with only some questions which could take more time. I will explain each section and I will make sure you get a complete idea of how the questions were and the approach to solve it. In 2020, they gave a booklet containing questions. No extra sheets were provided for rough work. The exam started at around 10 a.m. and finished at 12 p.m. There were four options for every question. Only one of them was right. Each question carries three marks. Wrong answers will have negative one. Please make sure you read the guidelines properly when you get the question paper. We don't know whether they will be following the same pattern considering the fact that MGNF has rolled out to the entire country this year. So we are now going to solve verbal ability and reading comprehension section. If we break down the section, we have 10 questions from reading comprehension. Four small passages were there. The rest of the 20 questions involved identifying preposition, filling the blanks with appropriate words, identifying odd words from a group and so on. We will be doing a comprehensive lesson on proper use of preposition and uh, another video on how to learn more words. So let's solve the questions together. You can pause the video if you want. Question 61 to 64. So it talks about the 74th amendment to the Indian constitution which was passed about 25 years ago to give more autonomy to metropolitan regions like Bangalore. But due to two reasons, devolution of power has not happened yet. Devolution means to give more power to a lower level. An example would be central government giving power to local or regional administration. Coming back to the point, due to two reasons, devolution of power hasn't happened yet. One, lack of political will. Two, due to increasingly complex issues that impact urban area. Then the passage talks about a specific example of Bangalore in Karnataka. There is a state town planning act that has been in force for so many years and using this act they have established a metropolitan planning authority which is called Bangalore Development Authority BDA to prepare the master plan for Bangalore. So now implementation of 74th amendment becomes more complex due to these already existing bodies and a planning authority. The word compounded means make matters worse. Now the passage moves on to talk about K.C. Shivaramakrishnan who asks to remove the main provision of the 74th constitutional amendment. He wants to remove the provision which calls for the establishment of a metropolitan planning committee MPC for every metro region. So this is the overall idea of the passage, 74th Amendment Act, why it has not been implemented. K.C. Shivaramakrishnan's solution of removing MPC. Let's go to the questions, question 61. The passage addresses which of the following issues related to the governance of the city of Bangalore. Option A, 74th Amendment has not been enforced in Bangalore, so it has not brought recognition or autonomy yet. We move on to B, again it is not implemented, mainly because of the complex issues, so option B is out. Option C, K.C. Shivaramakrishnan actually says to remove MPC, so option C is wrong. Option D, lack of political will for devolution and conflicts between BDA and MPC makes governance of urban areas difficult. This is the answer. Question number 62. In my opinion, this is a tough question. I cannot easily reach a conclusion here. If you are also finding this hard while attending the exam, then keep these kinds of questions aside for the second round. So question 62. The passage suggests that K.C. Shivaramakrishnan's book displays which of the following qualities. Option A. Deep appreciation with how the BDA functions. It is not said so in the passage, but let's keep it aside for now. Option B. Deep appreciation for the 74th amendment. This is not true because in his book, he has clearly asked to delete the main problem of the amendment. If he had deep appreciation, he would not have done so. So B is out. We move on to option C. Deep respect for devolution of financial powers on the one hand and for the political support for this policy on the other hand. Again, he has asked for deletion of some provisions. So in a way, he does not show his deep respect for devolution of powers. Option D in the ability for the 74th amendment to provide a practical framework for solving the complex process of urbanization. Yet again, the same explanation. If he believed in the 74th amendment, he would not have asked to change it. So option D is out. Only option that fits is option A. Deep appreciation for how the BDA functions. This is my opinion. If you differ with me, please comment down below. The reason for my conclusion is K.C. Shivaramakrishnan argues for the removal of the main provision of the constitutional amendment which calls for the establishment of a metropolitan planning committee MPC for every metro region. So he does not want MPC and it implies that he is satisfied with the current system and current system is led by Bangalore Development Authority BDA and hence it is implied from the passage that option A is right. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर 63 आई थिंक दिस इज मच इजियर ऑप्शन ए प्रिपेयर द मास्टर प्लान फॉर बैंगलोर इट डस इन से सो ऑप्शन बी आइडेंटिफाई एंड रिसॉल्व लीगल एंड पॉलिटिकल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट्स इन मेट्रोपॉलिटन एरियाज अगेन नॉट मेंशन इन द पैसेज ऑप्शन सी एस्टैब्लिश एंड मेक फंक्शनल द बुक ऑन गवर्नेंस ऑफ मेगा सिटीज द पैसेज डस नॉट से एनीथिंग अबाउट इंप्लीमेंटिंग और नॉट इंप्लीमेंटिंग द थिंग्स इन द बुक नाउ ऑप्शन डी रिप्लेस द स्टेट टाउन प्लानिंग एक्ट The amendment is for devolution of power, and the current state town planning act should be removed for this to happen. So, option D is the answer. Question number sixty-four. The state town planning act is again the same explanation as above. The fitting answer is A, to be replaced by the seventy-fourth amendment. Option B, C, D is not mentioned anywhere in the passage, but A can clearly be implied. So, I am going with option A. Now, we are moving on to the next passage. Pause the video if you want to and try to understand it. Then we will move on to answering the question. Hope you read the passage. Let's look at it. It is basically a discussion about Buddha images in human form and where it emerges first. First few lines talks about two regions, Madura in central India and Gandhara, which is part of uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, where anthropomorphic sculptures first appeared. Anthropomorphic means a human form resembling human characters. We can see two groups in this passage. One says it was first found in Madura, and the other says it is in Gandhara. Now let's make a list of things either group says. Those in support of Gandhara says earlier Buddha art was an iconic and bas relief as you can see an iconic means as you can see an iconic means there is no sculpture and bas relief means there are projections on a plain surface it looks like a painting but have projections out from the surface so it says the idea of sculptures came from greek remember that whenever you hear greek it supports gandhara in the next paragraph they say gandhara sculpted their buddhas in heavy pleated drapery similar to that of greek statues wavy lines indicating hair also reflect greek influence Now let's focus on artists who support Madura. They argue that indigenous development of such representations happened in Madura itself and not from Greeks. Even though they accept there was influence from other countries, they say the style slowly developed in Madura itself. Madura portrayed Buddha as wearing lighter robes draped in a monastic style, often with part of the shoulder and chest left bare. They say that it is specific to Madura region and hence it was adopted to the sculptures. Anyway, the passage ends by saying totality of evidence suggests that The Buddha image evolved simultaneously in both regions and was shaped by cultural influences in each region. Let's look at the question. Question number 65. Which of the following if true would those who believe that anthropomorphic images of Buddha originated in Gandhara be likely to cite as evidence to hold a view point? I will simplify the question. Suppose you are a Gandhara supporter, then which of the following options will you use to prove that human like images of buddha originated in gandhara option a pre buddhist subcultures in the gandhara region created representations of their deities human form the passage does not say this passage clearly states greek influence was a reason for gandhara region option b madhuran buddhas lightweight robes appear to have been modeled on the real robes of people who lived in a warm climate the passage only says they were robes but the other details are missing both option a and b are out Option C Gandharan artists were isolated from the larger society and not exposed to influences from outside the region the passage say exactly opposite of this so C is rejected option D the hairstyles worn by Gandharan buddhas are similar to those depicted on greek pottery from the same period this is said in the passage as an evidence for gandhara region so option D is the answer Question 66 According to the passage Buddhist art option A first appeared in regions that are now part of India Pakistan and Afghanistan you have to be very careful here the question say Buddhist art and the first paragraph says scholars of early Buddhist art agrees that Buddha images in human form in human form emerged around the 1st century AD in the regions of Madura in India and Gandhara now part of Pakistan and Afghanistan so it says a subsection of the Buddha art which involved human form and not Buddha art as a whole so we have to reject off Option A. I hope it is clear for you. Option B. Experienced a period during which human representations of the Buddha were not common. This is true. There was a period when an iconic and bas relief was common and not human form. So, so option B is our best answer right now. Let's confirm by looking at option C and D. Option C. Characteristically portrayed figures with elongated ear lobes and strong facial features. Yes, this was a part of Buddhist art, but there were other styles too. So it is an incomplete answer. Option D began to appear in the medium of bas relief as a result of Greek influence. The first half of the option is true and the second is false. The passage does not say that bas relief was a result of Greek influence. It actually implies the opposite. So option D is out. Our answer is option B. Which of the following statements if true 
most seriously we can see arguments so you have to read this passage understand the summary of the passage and then choose the one from options which will closely negate or weaken the argument made i want you to read this passage and maybe list out some bullet points uh, you can pause if you want this is my list of points one microfiber synthetic clothes are increasing two it provides same durability and less stress on natural resources third point is uh, even though it is good it is uh, three times as expensive and hence cannot be seen as a financially viable substitute at this time so in conclusion uh, it says synthetic is good but not financially viable at this time let's look at the options starting from e it clearly says that the cost of providing stain guards for microfiber synthetic shirts will be greater than stain guards for natural fiber shirts. It actually supports the argument that synthetic fiber is not feasible. Let's look at uh, option D. Cost of fiber synthetics will remain stable and recycling programs for natural fibers will bring down the cost of natural fibers. Again, it is supporting. Option C says upkeep of natural fiber shirts is far less expensive. Option B says synthetic clothes uh, necessitates uh, factories to renovate obsolete machinery it is increasing the price again now we come to option a which says a microfiber synthetic shirt costs one half of the price of a natural fiber shirt to maintain so literally we can see argument that a synthetic is too costly for the time being it doesn't completely nullify the passage but uh, still this one weakens it so option a is the answer question number 68 uh, you can read through passage and uh, get an overall idea then try answering the questions you can pause the video and try for a couple of minutes. So let's go by paragraph by paragraph. First paragraph says education enriched lives. Example of Republic of Korea after war. Even lowest interest to the country was too risky during those times. Second paragraph says uh, educating well through innovative policies. As a result, Korea achieved a universal literacy and became a high income country. Third paragraph can see benefits of education in other countries as well, what education does to individuals and societies. For individuals, education promotes employment, earnings and health. It raises pride and opens new horizons. For societies, it drives long-term economic growth, reduces poverty, spurs innovation, strengthens institutions and fosters social cohesion. Last paragraph, education advances the World Bank Group's twin goals, ending extreme poverty and generate a real return on education by helping students to learn and acquire skills. World Bank report says the learning is not happening in many countries and communities. Schooling without learning is a terrible waste of money. So overall, this passage says that education can lift up countries if properly done. Education becomes complete when there is learning and acquiring skills. Question number 18. What is the key argument the author emphasizes above? Let's look at option D. It says investing in education today can be a safeguard towards a constant foreign aid. That is not at all true. So ABC remains. Uh, C says education has many benefits for individuals and societies that collectively enable development. This is a possibility the author does talk about individual societies and the benefit they receive through proper education. Let's look at A and B just to make sure that this is the best answer. Option B, countries with low education should be considered for the lowest rate loans, uh, even if they are considered too risky to promote development. This paragraph is not too much about getting loans, so B is definitely out. Option A, education leads to enriched lives because it enables universal literacy. It is true in the context of our question, but it is not a better answer than C, so we go with C. Question 19, education has an important role to play in the World Bank's twin goals because uh, let me remind what the twin goals are, ending extreme poverty and to generate a real return on education by helping the students to learn and acquire skills. Option A, Korea went from being poor to a developed country. It can be taken as an example, but uh, that is not why education has an important role. We go to option B, education can lead to the development of human capital. This is a possibility. Option C, uh, education coupled with smart, innovative government policies and a vibrant private sector has led to the World Bank's twin objectives. It doesn't answer our question. Option D, education is the end goal of World Bank's twin objectives. Not at all. End goal is to end poverty and help in learning. So option B is the answer. Question number 20. On the relationship between learning and education, there is uh, four options. It can be confusing between A and B, but answer should be B. As it says in the passage, education becomes complete only when learning happens. So option B, education happens when learning happens, should be the right answer. Now let's look at uh, question number 71 to 77. Each question lists a group of words. Identify the word that does not belong with the others. Please remember that for the exam, they can give different directions. Make sure you read it properly. Question 71, option A, confirmed, C, ratified, D, established, have the same meaning. It means confirmed or fixed. Option B, tentative, means not confirmed or not. So, option B is the answer. Question number 72, option C, explicit, means to state clearly. Option B, specific, also have a similar meaning. And option D, forthright, means to speak something directly or say directly to the face. 
While option A implied means it is not said directly but you have to understand from the context. We have used the word implied a lot in this video. I hope you got that. So option A is the answer. Question number 73. The words are A supple, B flexible, rigid, limber. You might have noticed option B and C is exactly opposite. So one of them needs to be the answer. Now let's look at option A supple which, which means bending and moving easily or flexible. And limber is a synonym of supple. So option C rigid is the odd one. Question number 74, option A, malroid, B, inept, C, clumsy, D, nimble. Inept means lacking in fitness or aptitude or incompetent. Option C, clumsy also means the same. Option, option A. A also means clumsy. So here option D, nimble is the answer. Nimble means quick and light in movement or action. If you have, if you are finding these questions hard, don't worry about it. We will do a comprehensive video covering words, how words are formed and how to learn them faster. Moving on to question number 75. Here option A pinnacle and option C submit means the same, both refers to a peak. Now option B and D remain. Option B perigee and option D apogee. Actually these two words refer to orbital positions of a satellite in respect to earth. You can look at it later. The word apogee also has a meaning which says highest point which matches with option A and C. So option B is the answer. I will also give you the formation of both apogee and perigee. Apo means far and peri means near. We will do more detailed discussion in coming videos. Let's move on to question number 76. Dispirited means having lost enthusiasm and hope. Option A, B, D means to have faith or to believe or to be passionate. So option B, dispirited is the answer. Question number 77, stentorian, booming, thundering, all of these means loud or powerful sound and tranquil means to be calm. You must have heard the word tranquilizer which is used to reduce anxiety to give calmness. So option A tranquil is the answer. Question number 78 to 90 is mostly fill in the blanks. Question 78. Sonia felt that her promotion was being held back because she didn't have any certification in rural development. She resolved to get a postgraduate certificate in rural development as soon as possible. So option A is the answer. Question number 79, Sitaram was a direct relative of the deceased real estate magnate. His claim to the estate was legitimate. Option D is the answer. Question 80, for the first take home assignment of the fall term, the students in Professor Gupta's English course had to write a prissy to summarize the short story they had read. A prissy is actually another way to say summary, so option C is the answer. Question number 81, my mobile phone was the latest when I bought it three years ago, but now it is Option D, outmoded is the answer. It means old fashioned. Question number 82. This might require some explanation. The audience, the audience puzzled over the cryptic remark made by the mayoral candidate. So option B is the answer. The word puzzle means to not understand and cryptic means to be hidden. So the mayor did not say it directly to the audience and hence they were puzzled. Option B is the answer. Question number 83. Shamsi fell asleep during the lecture because the speaker had such a monotonous voice. You are not going to sleep if the sound is loud or shrill and clear and clear doesn't fit properly into the context. So option D monotonous is the answer. Question number 84. I have always liked your positive attitude. It has favorably affected our working relationship. Reason for choosing option B is because the first part says it is both. Can't be woeful. So option D can't be the answer. Option C can it does not make much sense in the situation and I ruled out option A emotions because of has in the second part. Emotions is a plural which means it has should have been replaced by it have. Even without this point spiritually it does not fit well so option B is the right answer. Question number 85. The Earth Day committee leader Mr. Vijanamai placed large garbage bins in the park to facilitate Saturday's cleanup. Option B is the answer. Question 86. Olita inadvertently misplaced the bill and forget about it. As a result she missed paying her dues and adversely affected her credit rating. Inadvertently means without knowledge and adversely means in a harmful way. Question number 87. Do not delude yourself. You must pass the last exam of the semester to graduate. Option A is the answer. Question number 88. I have often found him negligent in his work. Option A. Question number 89. The answer would be option D since uh, corrosion destroys metal. Erosion does the same with rocks. Question number 90. Minority aspirations cannot forever be kept in check with the gun. Let's go to general awareness section now. The horn of a rhinoceros is a, I think it is option C, modified hair. Please do a research on it and comment your answer below. The reason for saying hair is because it is made mainly of keratin which is found in hair. Who among these was the first woman prime minister of a country? You can see four options. Hillary Clinton is not the answer of course. Uh, United States of America does not have prime ministership. 
All the power is vested with the president and of course she was the wife of Bill Clinton. She also fought the election in the year 2017. Option C is Margaret Thatcher. She was the Prime Minister of uh, United Kingdom from the year 1979 to 1990. You would know that uh, Indira Gandhi was the Prime Minister of India from the year 1966. So option C is out. So we now kind of narrowed it down to options A and B. The answer here is Sirimavo Bandara Naige. She was the Prime Minister of Ceylon or uh, Sri Lanka from the year 1960, six years before Indira Gandhi took office. So option B is the answer. Question number 93, the newest state of India is Telangana, option A. Question number 94, the term Orange Revolution is used in the context of which country, option D, Ukraine. Question 95, who succeeded Morarji Desai as the Prime Minister of India, option C, Charan Singh. Question 96, which of the following is not a major port on the east coast of India, option D, Mangalore. It is present in the western side of India. Question number 97. Which of the following is a metal found in liquid state at room temperature? Option A. Mercury is the answer. Question number 98. The capital of Tripura is Agartala. Question 99. The civil disobedience movement was launched by option B. Mahatma Gandhi. Last question. Question number 100. In a free economy, prices are determined by option A. Supply and demand. I hope the video was useful. I will upload the next section solving DILR and QA soon. Thank you, stay safe and see you again.